at 2 o'clock in the morning, Tuesday, we were off on Wednesday. And then uh, started work yesterday in closing down Georgia and what we learned on what we have to do to get better, what transpired in the second half and how we can learn from it. Uh, and then we've just started work today. Uh, Arkansas is the most talented team we've played. Obviously, a month ago, they were 10th in the country. Uh, Coach Muss has done an incredible job during his collegiate head coaching career. Um, I think they were preseason. I don't, I don't know what they were, top 20 for sure, and we're ranked the first six or eight weeks, getting as high as number 10, ultra-talented. Uh, for sure, the most talented team that we've played the fastest team we've played. Uh, I think their tempo, pace of play this week, they're 17th in the country. Uh, they get fouled at a very high rate, and that's a dangerous combination, right? And a lot of, in my opinion, why they get fouled is because they play so fast and teams just stay behind in the possession, whether they score in transition or they just stay behind the rest of the possession, not guarding the ball. They're getting to the paint multiple guys that can drive, multiple dr guys uh, that are really good in the paint slash mid post area. We'll have our hands full. They are um, ultra talented, one of the more talented teams in the country, uh, hence the success that they've had thus far. I realize conference play is different, but why do you think they've had trouble the first two games against teams that obviously most people expected them to win? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I, 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 without sounding like a coach, I think that's all just uh, what Twitter says. You know, um, Mississippi State has dramatically improved. Uh, Vanderbilt has had positive, progressive growth um, throughout Coach Stack's career. And I think um, numbers will play themselves out. Uh, some teams have played two, some teams have played one, but... When you look at what has transpired in just my tenure at A&M, the league continues to get better. The league continues to get better, uh, not just the teams in the league competing against one another, but when you look at it nationally. And so uh, to win on the road is really hard to do, no matter what team that you're playing. Uh, and all of that preseason stuff, that all comes from people that are very active on Twitter. Uh, it doesn't come from the coaches that are studying the rosters that know the different styles of play. Um, so I, I don't, I, I don't exactly know um, if that answers your question, but um, Vanderbilt is a good team. It was a one possession game. Uh, our game at Georgia was a one possession game. And that's, that's what you begin to see in January and February. So with them being 0 and 2 and probably expecting to be 2 and 0, you ex expect to see a pretty desperate team uh, tomorrow? Yeah, I, I think the good teams, Chip, I think they play desperate regardless of their record. Uh, you know, we played Oregon State. I think they were 1 and 9. They're desperate. Uh, we played Georgia. Uh, they're 0 and 0, and they have the same record as us. And maybe over the last couple of weeks, things hadn't went as well as they wanted. So I think some of the adjectives that describe based on someone's record uh, I think that's all just kind of fluff uh, real real teams uh, real competitors are desperate all of the time regardless of their record how much is Henry Coleman's kind of family pedigree of, of having good athletes have you seen and what he's been able to bring and, and the kind of person he is I haven't seen his younger brother obviously I've known him a long time they say his younger brother. Uh, is probably the best athlete in the family. Um, obviously, I have a great relationship with Coach Beamer and some of the longtime staff members of Coach Beamer. Uh, I never saw Mr. Coleman play football, uh, but I have spent more time talking to him about football than I have basketball. I think Henry should have played football. Um, I think he's had some good games. Obviously, game number one here was great in non-conference uh, that I didn't coach. And then, obviously, game number one of – SEC play, he was great. Uh, I, I told him, I, we just need to act like it's game number one every every game. Because uh, the previous three games, Henry had not – the previous three games he was combined was not as good as he was at Georgia. I do think, and I've said this to you before, they are incredibly good people. Uh, education is the priority. Character is the priority. Who their son is around – is the priority. 
I, th- I think sports has been a part of that family's life. Um, obviously, his mom went to UVA and Mr. Coleman went to Tech. Um, and and so, yeah, I, I just think it's what they do. His, his brother is very involved in the same – at the same high school that's ultra successful within the same summer league program that's very successful. So I think it's just, you know, like it's – it's what you want a family to be about as far as people and what you want their, them to be about off the floor, off the field, on the field, on the court. Uh, just really, really pure people. think this game uh, means anything more to Ethan, and do you have to talk to a guy like that and say, hey, uh, I know where you played before, but, uh, you know, you got to keep your things in perspective? You know, Olin um, – I think as time plays out, maybe a year from now, I think you'll almost be able to ask that question once a week. Like when you see how things have changed, the model of college athletics, what we grew up doing, that's over. And so like uh, someone probably asked Mus, hey, what do you think about Jackson Robinson? And uh, well, what about – Ethan Henderson and um, the head coach at Auburn is probably going to be asked that same question about the quarterback and coach Fisher is probably going to be asked about the quarterback from LSU. Like I I think that I I don't know how to answer that question. Um, Yeah. I don't, I don't step away from it relative to Ethan. Um, I didn't step away from it when we were playing TCU. Hey, uh, there's two kids here and a coach here and, Somehow they went over there. Like, I'm not trying to avoid it. I just think it's part of the new model. And I think, uh, I'm not saying that I'm a prophet. I think it's going to happen even more and more. Um, not saying it's right. Not saying it's wrong. Not going to get in the crosshairs of who uh, all the smart people are making the decisions. But, um, yeah, I, I think you can just sub the name in and out. And that's a question you can always ask. The uh, you were talking about the way Arkansas plays and they're good. That's kind of the way y'all play. So is yeah. this going to be? That, but you know, like uh, we want to play like them. Um, we're not as good as them uh, in playing that way. I think we're trending towards we want to play with more pace, and we've tried to implement some things that ignite us offensively. Um, they have a distinct style of play, and I think it's the most talented team they've had since he's been there. Uh, and he's done a really good job. They're they're the best team we've played, and their talent is superb. Um, but seventh, if you're seventeenth in the country in tempo, and you're top ten in the country in getting fouled, those are those are explosive numbers. Um, and so we've got to figure out how can we slow them down in transition, and then how can we defend and not foul? Uh, you know, we didn't get into the bonus at Georgia. Uh, until two minutes to go in the game. Uh, and at that time, when we got to the bonus, um, it was the eighth foul called against Georgia in the first 38 minutes. Like, for a team that needs to score points from the free throw line, that really hurt us. We shot the highest percentage we have in a long time. That was a separator. But that we only shot 14, that's not good. Like, we, you want to be – all coaches would say this, but you, you want to make more than the opponent attempts. And in order to do that, you need to be the first team to the bonus. Well, we played the entire first half, never got to the bonus. And we played 18 minutes of the second half and never got to the bonus. That, that's, um, that's hard to overcome, whether you're playing at home, whether you're playing on the road relative to what we're trying to accomplish offensively. If you're 17th in the country and that's how fast you run the 40-yard dash, well, a, a derivative of being that fast is is you're going to get open looks, you're going to get paint touches, and then the opponent is going to foul you because they're not back in transition. And so those two things are combined. We do want to play with pace and we do want to be fouled, uh, but we, we are not near as – effective thus far as they have been through their thus far of the season. 
I look at Notay's leading them in scores, but they no, have four good. guys in double figures, yeah. and they have a fifth guy that's nine nine. Yeah, so they, they, they're going to play. Oh, I, their first seven guys. Uh, if you really study their numbers, uh, one zero four. I mean, ten. Ten is six ten, and is second on their team in assists. He's for sure the best passing big in the country. Like if you look at the seven guys that are playing heavy minutes for them, they put stress on you. And, you know, like I, I think the when you are talking about an individual player with the ball, well, obviously he's on ball side. But when he has, uh, has the skill that so many of their guys do, that requires the weak side of your defense to help the ball side. And now all of a sudden, when that ball goes from ball side to weak side and you're in long closeouts and uh, one is throwing the ball two, four, you're in a bind. And uh, that's why I think their talent is uh, – obviously, I haven't studied all the teams in the league, so I may be saying this every game. But, um, yeah, I, they have seven – I just told our guys, we just went over personnel. That was part of what we did uh, the day before. Their seven guys are all high major players. There's not one guy that you look at. I mean, number five was an all-league player uh, at Pitt. I mean, he is a really good player. And uh, what I told our guys, those seven guys that we covered, all of them are high major players and pro prospects. Do you then have an advantage somewhere in this game? That well, I don't know. No. Uh, no, because they'll they'll play more than seven. I don't I don't I don't know where our advantage is. <laughs> I think about that. That's a good, that's a good question. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I hope that we play hard. Uh, I hope that uh, we can negate some of what they're good at. You know, if you if, if they score, I think they scored thirty six points in the paint and had thirteen free throws last year against us, uh, and it was a Tie ball game, sideline out of bounds. We hadn't played in 35 days. Tie ball game, sideline out of bounds. We turn it over. They score a layup, call another timeout, sideline out of bounds. Q misses the shot in the corner to win it. And then we have to foul uh, the rest of the whatever it was, 20 seconds. But um, yeah, I'm not sure what that answer is, Owen. Are you ready to say that y'all are, I know it's what, 13 games it seems that, that or 14, that y'all are a, Legitimate, good perimeter shooting team now? This is what I would say on that. Um, and I know Travis asked it last time we had this. I think sometimes part of field goal percentage is based on shot selection. And I think over time, not probably the first four-ish games, I think we learned it for sure in Vegas. First of all, we started out great against Wisconsin. And then did nothing. We played Butler, and it's a grinded out game. We play Notre Dame. We're behind. Henry gives up that corner three with one second on the shot clock for Notre Dame. That put us down 14, and we had to claw our way back. But uh, what happens in a game like Notre Dame? You're down 14, and so – I think a player feels like the value of the possession is even more because they understand we can't turn it over. We can't foul. We need to get fouled so the clock will stop. And if we're not going to get fouled and we're not going to turn it over, whatever shot we're about to shoot, you need to make it. And I think when you play with that burden of, mm, you're going to make it, turn down the good one. Let's get a great one. We need to shoot. 60% over the next 12 minutes to close this game down. And that's literally what happened. If you watch the game, like uh, Henry gives up the corner blind pig three, unaware of what was going on. And like at that moment in time, we played 10 players the next 12 minutes. And you could feel like, hey, man, if you're shooting that, you better make it. And if you ain't shooting it, you better drive in a straight line and get fouled. And so I think some of our we can shoot is 
we're doing a better job in shot selection. You know, if you think about um, maybe game two, game three, game four, I think we were taking a lot of me shots. Uh, we, we're much better at taking we shots. Uh, and the value of a we shot is better than a me shot. And so I think some of, can this guy really shoot? Uh, he's, I wouldn't necessarily say he's a knockdown shooter, but his shot's not broke. But he's shooting the shots that he can make. And so much of our shots and how we're trying to, our movement discipline offensively is based on where the ball's going. The ball's telling you what to do. And so if the ball is coming from inside out, you're going to make a lot of those shots. Aaron Cash, um, um, let me think about this. We played Central Arkansas, and he had six offensive rebounds that turned into 14 points. Uh, at Georgia, Aaron Cash had five offensive rebounds that turned into 17 points. You could say the same. Henry decided he wanted to rebound uh, in Athens. Maybe, maybe uh, he likes Georgia because he keeps up with football. But um, when those guys, Olin, get an offensive rebound and they can score it right away, you're probably going to shoot 75 to 85 percent on that putback. But also, Aaron and Henry are very aware. If I can't score it, let me pitch it out. And now, because the defense is in rotation on an offensive rebounding uh, broken floor situation, now those shots are coming inside out. I studied it when I was an assistant prior to being a head coach. If the ball comes inside out, statistically speaking, in Division One, the difference is 17%. So if the ball only stays on the perimeter and we're just passing it, side, top, side, and you shoot it, versus uh, I pass it to Travis, and Travis drives it baseline to the paint. And now he passes it to you, ball side to weak side. You'll shoot that ball 17% higher. It's almost like a bet. It's like, it's, it's, like the, it's like the odds line in craps. Well, the odds line is based on what number did you roll. And... 17% is distinctly different. And I think our guys have done a better job in their shot selection. Are we the best shooters in the league? No, but I think we're getting closer to making sure that the shots that we shoot are the, the right shot at the right time for us. Interesting. Coach? Yeah, I got a question for Coach. Uh, Jordan Adams Cakes is so obviously it's a big game on, against Georgia, a big high. Any problems with the guys maybe having a big hit after a really uh, nice win? Thankful we won. Uh, we could have just as easily had a completely different last two days because we could have lost. We were up 17 with 17 minutes to play. And over the next 17 minutes, they outscored us by 18. So I, I don't, I don't think that. I haven't sensed that. Um, I think they're excited to play Arkansas. I think they're excited to play a home game. Uh, I think our crowds have continued to increase uh, over the last month, even with the students out of town. I think uh, the community has supported us maybe better than they have since we've been here. But uh, no, I don't. I don't think we're good enough. Any of us to think that we're any good. We, we're going to have to try real hard to win the first ATO tomorrow. About a month ago, you said that you don't necessarily have a star player on the team. Everyone has to do their own part. Do you still think that's the same way with this guy over here playing as well as he is right now? Yeah, uh, that guy over there has played good one game out of the last five. <laughs> and, uh, and I've been ultra mean to him, and he accepts it because of our relationship. Uh, we, we don't need Henry to be what he was at Georgia every day. If he could be, that would be great. Uh, but we for sure don't need Henry to be what he was the previous four games because we don't have a chance to win at this level. Uh, he has to have the presence for us on both ends of the floor. And when he stays in a narrow lane in regards to his mentality, he can do that. And the other thing, and I'm not sticking up for Henry because I like him, um, he's also a freshman. And he played more minutes against Georgia uh, on Tuesday than he did all of last year in conference play in the ACC. 
And uh, so, however you want to say it, Henry will graduate early, but on paper, he's a COVID freshman. And on paper, Marcus Williams is a COVID freshman. And on paper, four is a normal person freshman. And on paper, uh, Mo is a normal person freshman. So, like, I don't, I don't want to um, go too fast that we also don't realize that that was their first at uh, SEC road game. And so, uh, yeah, no, uh, Henry played good, and he's a big part of why we won. But we need him to continue on that path, but we're going to need more guys. Like, I thought Q was bad. And uh, if there's a guy that you want to count on, the game before, I think he had 31-7. and seven. So is it Henry or Q? Well, let's just take the best version of Henry and Q. Well, Marcus hit the shot. Yeah, throw him in. Well, what about the, what about four uh, being player of the week two weeks ago? Yeah, we want his best version too. Because if you're trying to play against the best in this league, we're going to need the best version of everybody.